nice skin, so gorgeous. We thank the life gorgeous. Thank the life gorgeous. I love the life gorgeous. It's also so tight. Ladies and gentlemen, it is nighttime in Los Angeles. I never recorded at night, so the lighting is a little different. Welcome to Life Gorgeous. My name is Craigers. This is where I share my magical life in hopes of improving your life. Well, well, well. No Rudy Gobert and the Timberwolves still win. What a bizarre, glorious game. The Wolves defeat the Denver Nuggets for a second straight game in Denver and the Wolves lead two games to zero. And I'm stunned. Uh, first of all, I was very disappointed that Rudy uh, couldn't make the game. He wanted to see the birth of his child. And um, he, w- he was going to take a private plane back, but the uh, it was too windy and he couldn't he couldn't fly back. It wasn't safe, so he missed the game. And I just was like very upset. I would we don't have home court advantage in this series. We can't throw away a game. But I tried to stay positive because that's what I do. And uh, what a show the Timberwolves put on without Rudy Gobert. And here's a here's a comment I would say people might want to ask me, Craig, what do you think of Rudy's decision? to see the birth of his child. Well, I have great respect for that. I respect a player who misses a game because he wants to see the birth of his child, but I also respect the player who says, I'm going to love my kid and I'm going to miss the birth of my, of my child because I want to win a championship. So I respect both players because there are two types of players. Michael Jordan probably would not, would never miss a game. But that's that, because some people have asked me about this. Completely understand it. Rudy was there. Good for him. He's going to win Defensive Player of the of the Year this week, probably. They're going to give out that award. And uh, good for him. We didn't need him tonight because uh, it was just a weird game. Our defense was suffocating. As the announcer said, instead of five players, it looked like we had seven defenders. Denver has to be shell-shocked. They were getting so upset, the refs were not calling anything, including technicals. When the Nuggets coach, Michael Malone, comes on the floor, it's an automatic technical, and they didn't call it. I don't know what's going on. And there were some weird calls in game one when Ant got clobbered, and then Ant got a technical, which the league later rescinded in game one when they said he was taunting. Weird refereeing. But I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing it out because we're up 2-0. Uh, so Cat got off to a hot start. We shot over 50% in the first half. We were up 26 at halftime. We are up 32 at one point in the third quarter. And it's just a weird game. Uh, we are the best defensive team in the NBA. It's usually because of Rudy and then guys like Jaden McDaniels and Nikhil Alexander Walker, AKA Naw. No, Rudy tonight, everyone played well on D. Nas stood up to Jokic a few times. And in the regular season, Jokic ate, not, ate up Nas, ate up Kyle Anderson, always draws fouls on Cat. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is shocking. This is shocking. Um, I thought we could win in Denver the first two games as long as Rudy was playing. I did not anticipate this glorious, glorious win. Um, I want to go back to game one. So we have so much respect for Denver. Jokic is the best. Very hard to stop. Jamal Murray is uh, slowed by a calf. He's not playing particularly well, but we won game one. Anthony Edwards was amazing in that game, just like he was in game four against Phoenix. Uh, today, Ant was was good. Didn't have to be as spectacular in, in game two. Uh, Jamal Murray got very, very frustrated in game two. Uh, 
he should have gotten a few technicals. I mean, it was just weird. Uh, but something special is happening in Minnesota. We are up two games to none. We will have most of the week off. We'll play on Friday in Minneapolis game uh, game three, and then Sunday game four. Craigers, will you be there? I will. I will. I actually just got some. I'm going to be wearing these vintage Converse I just got. I don't know if you can see them. Look at that. Those are pretty cool. Suede. Those were a style that were introduced. Uh, they're called uh, One Star. Converse One Star. Introduced in 1974. <sighs> Long before the Wolves came into the league, they came into the league in 1989. For those of you who don't know, you young people, the uh, Minneapolis Lakers were in Minnesota in the 50s with George Mikan, late 40s, early 50s, mid 50s, early 50s. Then they moved to Los Angeles, I think, in 1959. George Mikan and the Minneapolis Lakers became the Los Angeles Lakers. And the Timberwolves came into existence in 1989, and they've struggled. But uh, who cares? Because we're dominant now. This could be our year. Let's just take it one game at a time, young paintball. <laughs> um, trying to think. Uh, I'm just, I'm just so surprised. Nas played well. He didn't shoot that well, but he made enough threes. He was like five for fifteen or five for fourteen. But uh, we're playing really well, uh, and I'll be going to games three and four. <sighs> Not going to tell you where I'm eating, but I'll be uh, dining out. I, I'll tell you some of my favorite restaurants in St. Paul, the Lexington, Meritage. Some say Meritage. I like Meritage. Much, sounds much better. Probably go to the St. Paul Grill, the St. Paul Hotel. And then, of course, in Minneapolis, Mason Margot, Manny's, Murray's. Maybe, maybe I'll go to Demi again, the tasting menu. Or Mara, these are Gavin Kaysen restaurants, Spoon and Stable. Uh, it's it's time to celebrate because we're playing so well. But anything can happen. Any injuries can happen. So you just uh, you stay calm, as I like to say. You pause for poise. I got a lot of different texts during the game. Uh, people just asking me, did you know the Wolves were this good? What's going on? Uh, well, I, this is a shocking game. This game, game two was a shocking game. Uh, Denver was so frustrated in the first half. Then they tried to play uh, better in the second half and not complain, but they were really, really upset. Is this series over? You know, I'm. you have to say no. You have to wait. You have to be patient. Anything can happen, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. I also felt, I don't know if this is true, that Denver was the best team in basketball, and until we beat them, they're the, they're the champs and they're the best. And there were people who said, this is towards the end of the regular season, these are basketball minds. These were the Ryan Rosillos of the world, that if Boston played the Nuggets in the finals, the Nuggets would manhandle Boston like four games to one, four games to two. We, we don't know. But if the Timberwolves are able to move on, I, we play well against OKC, if that's who beats Dallas in the other uh, Western Conference matchup. We played pretty well against Boston this year. We beat them. Uh, we split with them, but we played them close both times, and we beat them in overtime at home. Uh, but you never know. I, I have a lot of respect for Boston because I think they have so much offensive firepower, but I just am a little really uh, thrown off by the way Denver is playing. It's very odd. This was unexpected, this game tonight the, the first game was very close well it wasn't that close but um uh relatively close um and uh it's it's weird because i don't even really remember game one now because it seems so far away I, we won by seven uh we won by seven and Ann had 43 wow this was weird 
I hope you guys are doing okay. I'm going to do another short solo pod here because it's late and I've got a lot of lot to do this week, including uh, packing some clothes for games three and four. Uh, I'm doing uh, Rich Eisen's show tomorrow and Ryan Rosillo's podcast, and uh, we have some other things planned. I wanted to tell you a quick story. Um, uh, today is uh, it's, it's Monday, and the game just ended. And last night, I was in uh, Palm Springs, and I slept in the Eurovan again. So Princess Cherry, my significant other, my better half, is a uh, costume designer. And I think I've mentioned she uh, does the wardrobe for the singer Rod Stewart and his band. And she got a call recently that uh, another singer needed some help, uh, a gentleman by the name of Sammy Hagar. Uh, I think Rod Stewart has the same publicist or somehow there was a connection there. I don't I, I don't really listen to everything. But uh, so she, she had to dress Sammy Hagar, help him out for his induction in the uh, Walk of Fame. He, he's on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Plus, he's going on tour. And so she had, uh, there's a store that uh, she likes to use out in the Palm Springs area. So she says, we got to go out and return some stuff because he, he bought some stuff, but he, we got to return some stuff. And uh, by the way, she said, Sammy Hagar is extremely nice. And so we go out there and she says, let's, let's take the Euro van and, you know, spend the night. And we uh, went to, where did we go for dinner? We went to Copley's, which is uh, the old estate, part of the old estate of Cary Grant. And uh, we, I went to lunch at Spencer's, which is at the tennis club. And I had a martini at the, uh, the hotel, the Rowan at four saints, the bar restaurant upstairs on the rooftop. Uh, so, uh, it's called living. I, I do a lot of this. I do a lot of dining out. I do like cooking at home. Um, I don't recommend you you dine out all the time, but you know, I'm on the road. I can cook in the Euro van and I've done it and I will do it in the future. But I, uh, you know, we like to go out. Um, it's, it's kind of part of the life. Gorgeous French restaurants, Italian restaurants, one martini a week. Although when I go to Minnesota, it seems to be more than one martini in those four days that I'm there. Isn't that, can you see that's Timberwolves green? Be wearing that to games three and four. Most likely that's the plan. <sighs> Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, my uh, my buddy uh, Dave McMenamin uh, from ESPN. We're gonna, he's going to be out there in uh, Minneapolis for games three and four. He usually covers the Lakers. They are out. I thought they played the Nuggets well, uh, not as well as the Wolves are. I'm going to see Dave out there in uh, Minneapolis for games three and four. Good kid. Uh, he might write a blurb about me. Uh, we haven't decided our schedule yet. But it's it's going to be a very enjoyable week. Um, I've got to get my sleep. I've got to turn this around, as we like to say, to get it uh, posted by tomorrow on Tuesday. But uh, just to wrap up again, hope you like that Sammy Hagar story. That's kind of a bonus kill me, giving you some information as I'm kind of lit in a different way tonight. Kind of moody lighting. Probably listen to some Miles Davis before I go to bed. <sighs> Wolves win two games to none. I don't know what to say. We're playing very well, scrappy on defense. I think the obvious thing is we've raised our level of intensity in the playoffs. Our defense is really clicking. Our offense is, is pretty good. You know, we get sloppy sometimes with some silly turnovers. It's hard to concentrate when you're up 32 points. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I got to run. I'll see you next time. And remember, young people, I'm proud of you. I love the life gorgeous. It's also so tight.